Hey friends, we just went over arrays of strings and lists of strings and other things. Uh, and we talked about the difference between an array and a list and why you'd pick one over the other. And David advised us that sticking with lists is probably a good idea, but you will occasionally bump into the array here and there. But the concepts are the same. You index into a list, you yep. index into an array. You can both sort and search each, each of those, correct? And for each of them. You can for each over them. So let's return back to our code here where we were just looking at an array of strings. So here we have an array of strings of the names of our friends. And we had changed it into a string array, but we were going to change that back to a list of string. Okay. And we were for eaching over that list of them. Now, right now, this uh, list is just three names, and we for eached over them. And you were going to show me how to sort these. Yeah. Can I sort these like alphabetically? You can. Okay. Uh, so the list is called names. Right. So I say names dot, we get a list in this IntelliSense pop down of the things that are the most likely things like add, remove, clear, or even check for contains. Where am I going to find sorting? You type sort. You just type <laughs> Let's sort. sort. Let's see what happens. This is an interesting point. Do you think in C Sharp it's really easy to kind of just guess and be right? Yeah, you can explore and find things in the list. So you can search for like order or sort or any of those terms. And sometimes you get, you get lucky, right? Like you can see, yeah. you can order by, you can sort. Um, okay. So if I say sort, it just says sort the entire list and it's got a little one of four here, ooh. right? We know that we've been able to call functions. We've been kind of casually talking about how variable dot something method uh, pops up a list here. Are there different kinds of sort? There. There's like four different ones. There's four different kinds of sorts. What are the different things that I can potentially sort on? I can sort the entire element by the default by comparer. By the default comparer. Yep. So we open up sort and we can see that there's actually four different overloads where you can say sort and then add extra context where I might want to sort backwards. Yep. Backwards to forwards, or I might want to sort just an area within it, but I want to sort the whole thing. When I sort it, does it return a list of sorted things? So we had that clue from last time where the method itself either describes what it does, you know, changes the current list to be sorted, and then the other hint is returning void. So I am changing this list and I'm not getting a new one. Void means there's no return value, no result, nothing, okay. right? Nothing, nothing goes into the void, nothing That's comes right. out of the void. So you called sort and it just did stuff. It changed so the current state. So at this moment, names went from Scott, Anna, Philippe, Felipe to Anna, Felipe, Scott, Should presumably. Be. Okay, let's go ahead and try that. We'll say .NET run. That sorted it. Nice. Now you had said it's worth pointing out if you are doing this in a non-English language, uh, a non-Latin based text, that you might have issues with your sorting because every right. language sorts differently. Yep. So that's something to, to watch for, but for the purposes of what we're doing, that's sorted correctly. Yep. Okay. There are all kinds of options to like pass different kinds of what are called comparers. Mm -hmm. um, when Scott hovered over the sort method, it showed using the default comparer, but you may want to pass in one that's culture aware, for example. Right. right. And you can decide if you wanted to be wacky, you could have people objects that had different height and right. make the comparer compare their height. Exactly. So sort compared height if you wanted to, because you can do anything you want in C sharp. That's great. All right. Now let's move away for a second from strings and let's try a list of integers. Can I do that? You can have a list of anything. List of anything. List yep. of T. Of T. Where T is anything. Right. Okay. So I'm just making up numbers here. Just making up a bunch of random numbers. Those are grids. <laughs> Those are my grids. <laughs> uh, and then down here, we called it names. I can actually rename that. Yes. Yeah, this is a part of the, the C Sharp dev kit. If I did a search and replace, or I kind of like double clicked and I went like, change this, change this, change this, I could make a mistake. But I'm going to actually rename names, uh, and we'll just call it, let's say, numbers. Rename symbol. Ah, oh, rename symbol. Right. Okay. So for each number in numbers, and then this one down here will be number as well. So we're doing the exact same thing, except it's not a list 
of string. It's a list of int. int. Okay. See what that looks like. <laughs> so unnecessary, the exclamation mark. unnecessary exclamation mark. Ex exclamation it's mark. loud numbers. Uh, true story, by the way, David. Uh, when we were learning about factorials in, in the middle school, they put that up on the board and they said, what does that mean? And I said, five! <laughs> five factorial. <laughs> yeah, they didn't like me in that class. <sighs> cool. So that same sort is available to me. Uh, if I say numbers dot add, remove, contains, all the same list stuff is available for, for anything that I put into a list. That's right. That's cool. So you get the same methods with different kinds of data storing in the back end, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Very cool. So you said I could discover things. I, I saw a capacity and add and things like that. There's average. That's new. What are some other things? How would I search for a particular number? You can use index of. Index of. Now we yeah. saw that indexing into an array, there was the zeroth and the last, which is count minus one. Yep. Uh, if I say index of, and I, are you saying I have to pass in something? Like if I want to know what yeah. index of 99 is. Correct. So let's say the index of 99. And I need to either put that somewhere or output it. Correct? Yep. So console.writeline, I found 99 at index. Oh, and this is another example where I keep wanting to go like this for it's my your, strings. It's your habit. It's a bad habit because now I can put that dollar sign. I can do string interpolation, curly braces. Isn't that lovely? And I, right. I know I did it right because the syntax highlighting looks right. And then I'm going to just comment this out nice. with Control-K, Control-C. So we have a list of numbers. We sort them, which doesn't really matter. Oh, it actually it does, does matter. matter. I was going to say, it doesn't matter here. Yeah, that's a great one. This is going to be interesting because I think it's at 0, 1, 2. What if you print it before and after? Ooh, good idea. Let's move that and go up here. And we're going to see 99 before and after the sort. You're a clever man, Let's David do it. Fowler. Let's do it. .NET run. Ooh. Ooh. It got shuffled around. It did get shuffled around. So sorting actually works. And to your point, it sorted it in place. It sorted the list of integers in That's place. That's right. It took the list and it just moved things around. Very cool. The chairs got moved around. And again, that can be a list of anything. Uh, we've so far learned about integers and strings. We're now going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to learn about a thing called language integrated query. One of the best features of C Sharp. It's called Link. Link. And we're going to learn about it today as we continue to learn about C Sharp.